Hi and welcome to what day is it? Tuesday's tip. Ah! <laughs> Jeremy wrote to me saying, Miss Franklin, you can call me Laura Jeremy, but Miss Franklin is cute. I recently watched the How to Not Stretch Hamstrings video and get more flexible. And I found the results to be shocking. It definitely relaxed my muscles, where excessive stretching has not. I'm a college football player, American football, that has been struggling with tight and sore hamstrings for years and has been ending in constant strains and tears. After doing virtually every rehabilitation possible, I have the basic understanding that my hamstring issues are a result of tight hips and weak glutes. I stretch constantly and my lower body has loosened up a great deal. That being said, my hamstrings still tighten up and get ridiculously sore after high volume of lifting and running. This constant battle with my hammies is exhausting and given my, given my aspirations in athletics and the military, any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. He says his current routine is generally two workouts a day. Oh my goodness, I'm exhausted just listening to all of that. So, what can we do for you, Jeremy? We can do a bunch of stuff. For the strength training, is it applicable strength training for the movements that you do when you are running and sprinting and playing sports? Because if you're creating strength, I don't know, let's just say you're like lifting weights and you're building the strength in your biceps, in your deltoid muscles, and you're doing this movement, for example, and then you go out and you, you know, are running on the football field, the question is, are you doing this? Probably not. Same thing with legs. Are the strength training exercises that you're currently doing the same movements, the same movement patterns, the same synchronicity as you're doing when you are playing your sport? So you say that the tears and the strains happen when you're doing the fast movements, so it sounds to me like you actually need more strength in that movement and that would be dynamic strength and within those certain patterns. If you overstretch, you're actually cutting down the proprioceptive feedback, you're cutting like the nerve supply, the blood supply, you're literally depleting that. So you're going to actually get less feeling the more stretching you do, which is kind of crazy, right? Because most people who stretch want to actually feel better in their bodies, but if you overstretch, those of you who do you know, a lot of yoga or stretching or intense stretching, you might notice that wobbly leg syndrome, and that is actually not a good thing. That actually means that you've overstretched and shut down your body's communication system, so it's actually less able to coordinate you. So how does your body create strength and flexibility and how are those two things working together, if at all? So often when we think strength, what do most people think? Strength, strong, tight, bodybuilder, like, right? And what is going to happen with that kind of strength? <laughs> That kind of strength is the idea that everything is like locked up and hard and rigid, which is actually the opposite of how your body moves and is dynamic and can coordinate itself. So strength is not just the amount of weight you can hold, but it's the ability to be dynamic and mobile and actually coordinate all of your movements. If you're building strength into the idea that the more wall-like you become, the more solid you become, when you get out on the football field and try to run around, or you get in your you know, dance class or yoga class, when you try to move, your body's gonna be like, what? I haven't trained for that. I don't know how to be strong with the dynamic movement. So your body is a tensegrity system. Have you heard of tensegrity? Buckminster Fuller coined the term tensegrity, which means tension 
plus integrity. That means a system is able to yield to any pressure and force without collapsing. And it also means that any pressure or force on the system gets dispersed throughout the entire system. So it's different to this wall. This wall, if you press down on it, all the force just goes down through the wall into the floor. And because of that, it needs to be made out of very strong materials. You are not a wall because you need to move and run and sprint and dance. So you can't be made out of cement and like super strong heavy materials. We need something that's a lot lighter. So a tensegrity system is able to take pressure and convert it into stretch, spread it throughout the entire system so that we can take the pressure without having to be made of big solid lumps of wood or cement because that would be really silly, wouldn't it? Yes. So, a tensegrity system is more like this balloon. These balloons were combusted body of mine. So if I squeeze this balloon, do you see how, that makes an interesting noise. When I squeeze this balloon, the pressure is being dispersed throughout the entire system. The entire, or entire, the entire system. So a tire of a car, it takes the force of the car and it disperses it throughout the entire system. So that is a lot safer. And so to have an effective tensegrity system in your body, you need to have a balanced dynamic between the elastic part, which would be your muscles and your ligaments and your tendons and your fascia, and the rods, which would be the bones. This is the tall skinny guy, um, <clears throat> whoever was asking, someone was asking who the tall skinny guy is, so you can't see his face. Actually it's a girl. This is a female. Okay, so the key is to put strength into a healthy mobile system, not strength into squeezing and tightening and pulling in your belly button and gripping your butt and all these things that often people do to think of strength is actually just putting more resistance into the system and then the parts that are meant to be elastic and mobile can't move and that's when you end up with injuries because your muscles aren't able to take the shock, take the impact and convert it into stretch. So you've come to the right place. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will be making lots more stretching videos because I need to make whole video series on stretching. So subscribe to my channel and also come to laurahensfranklin.com and jump on my list there because every video is going to help you be more flexible and more in your body and more happy and balloon like. Jeremy, this morning I was like tuning into you and tuning into this question and seeing, you know, what out of the bazillion things could I say that would be most helpful to you? Basically everything that I share will all help you to become more flexible because your mind is involved, your emotions are involved, your brain is involved, your nervous system is involved, the more you understand your body. So what I'm getting for you right now, Jeremy, is so you've got the butt squeeze in one from the other video, so keep doing that. The next piece I'm getting that would be really key for you is to actually discover where your hip joint is. Here is Mrs. Skinny Guy, and we are going to um, take a look at her hip joint. So can you see that? This is what you got going on inside of you. So you've got your pelvis, and on top of, you know, you've got your glutes and your abs and all the muscles and everything on top. And this joint here, this joint is your hip joint. This is your hip joint. And this is the joint that I'm guessing, by tuning into you and feeling and presuming, um, you probably don't have very much awareness of. That is gonna be key for you to increasing your flexibility and helping the strength of your hamstrings. So the femur, this is the femur, this is your knee. The femur comes up like this, you see the angle of it? And then it's got a ball 
on the head of the femur and the socket, which is in there. I also recommend buying this book. So I think I told you on Friday I don't really read books, apart from Eric's books. This is the one and only book that everyone should have. Actually, all books by Eric Franklin, everyone should have. Um, this book is like a Bible for the body and imagery and Franklin method and it's freaking amazing and buy it. You can get it on Amazon um, and this will take you through your body and I will supplement with extra videos because it's hard to get it from a book and also go find some Franklin method classes or come take holy shit. So we want to find our hip joints. The way you do that is spread out your hand and you're going to put it across if you just bend your legs and kind of you might want to stick your butt out you can feel the crease here and you want to spread out your fingers and feel the width between your fingers in that crease is roughly where these hip joints are you see that so you want to put your hands there and imagine okay my hip joints are in there okay and then Another way to find your hip joint is if you find your sit bone. So the sit bone is the bone here, the base of the pelvis. So if you've got big glutes, which I'm guessing you might have, Jeremy, um, you want to bend forward because that will help pull your glutes off your sit bones and grab your butt. And can you feel the two nobbles in your butt? <laughs> Those are your sit bones. Cool. Okay, good. Okay, so come up you can still hold on to them. So now you're going to actually just take one hand and you're going to hold your sit bone and then the other hand you're going to put in the front of that crease that we found. Okay, and you're going to imagine up from your sit bone and back from the crease. That is where your hip joint is. So you're going to think, can I move my leg from my hip joint? So it's a ball and socket joint. So can you imagine the ball rolling back as you lift your leg, roll back, roll back, roll back, so nice and slowly, so what you want to do is as clear as you can get a picture of this hip joint, four more times, roll back, and roll back, so can I lift my leg from my hip joint? Okay, and now just shake it out and just notice how you feel. Notice if you feel a difference between the two sides. So just lift the leg we practiced and then compare it to the other side. Do you feel more flexible? Also notice how balanced you feel on that side compared to the other side. And also feel how strong you feel. So how strong do I feel on the side that I just imagine my hip joint versus the other side, maybe not quite so much. So one more thing, which is going to be probably surprising, is just lift up your right leg, kind of throw it up and notice how flexible does it feel in my hamstring, and then compare it to the other side. So do you feel a difference? So flexibility isn't stretching, because stretching is trying to push your body into positions that maybe isn't safe and your body will actually give you flexibility when you're using it correctly. And you're going to take your hands, you're going to grab your butt and you're going to find those sit bones and now you're going to bend your knees and I want you to imagine you can literally like pull your sit bones apart as you bend your knees. So can you let those sit bones spread apart as you bend your legs? Let them spread apart and then as you straighten up they're going to come back together. Okay, so imagine sit bones spread apart and then together. Sit bones apart and together, apart and together. Sit bones apart, sit bones together. Sit bones apart, sit bones together. Sit bones apart, sit bones together. And just notice how that feels. You might feel more energized in your pelvis, energized in your spine. You can actually feel more lifted in your pelvis. And now just compare that to 
squeezing your butt. So squeeze your butt. Now bend your legs. Ugh. And you notice you can't, or you're like fighting yourself. And that's because when you squeeze your butt, you're not allowing the natural movement that should happen in your pelvis and in your hips. So the last thing I'm going to give you to run with, Jeremy, you're gonna get yourself some balls. <laughs> These are Franklin balls. Um, you can buy them from optp.com. They come in pairs, we're actually just gonna start with one of them. And you're going to put it underneath your glute. So under your glute muscle and you're gonna breathe and you're going to just gently, slowly, breathe and roll. And imagine that any holding and tightening and restriction is just being able to be melted, washed out and breathe. And you might find it's a little tender in places and just breathe and imagine it melting. So you're gonna go all the way over, all the way around your butt. If you don't have these orange balls, don't use a tennis ball buy them, <laughs> go to optp.com and order the orange Franklin Method balls, they are special magical balls. I'm not just saying that because they're my husband's balls, they're not too hard. So if you got hard balls, Jeremy, um, it's going to be too intense for your body and you'll find that your body will just tighten up because it will be painful and you want to encourage your body to let go and to release the tension. And then you're gonna go onto your, just onto and slightly in front of your sit bone and breathe and gently massage and breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe. And just rolling, you can move like back and forth over the orange ball, breathing, breathing, breathing. <sighs> and then you can take the ball out and then notice how you feel. Probably more grounded in this side, probably more flexible. Yes, definitely. And when you stand up and when you start to run around, the blood is going to be flowing better, the lymph is going to be flowing better, the nervous system is going to be able to get its communication better. These balls are genius. That's what I got for you so that your hamstrings cannot be so hammy and you can spring into spring. As I said, there is a bazillion things I could give you to help improve your flexibility and your strength and your dynamic nets and your coordination. Get Eric's book, Dynamic Alignment Free Imagery. You can buy this on Amazon. You can also get it on Kindle. Um, I will be making more videos um, on flexibility very soon. And Jeremy, so my challenge to you is do this. Find a hip joint, imagine it, do that every day. Keep doing the butt squeezing, keep doing the deltoid squeezing from the other video. Do the ball rolling, um, tap yourself with the balls, balance your brain, relax your shoulders. Do every single video you can find on my website because they will all help. And um, why don't you buy some balls for your whole football team and send me a picture of you all doing it and I promise you, you will all get more flexible and stronger and fitter and win all your matches and then you can credit me. I might come and do a dance at your school or maybe not. I don't know, maybe I would. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want more of. Do you want more flexibility stuff, more ball stuff, more diving through the body stuff, um, tell me what you want, write it on my Facebook page and my blog please and make sure you sign up to orhensfranklin.com so that you can take the last five day supercharged challenge which will rock your world, I promise you, in really good ways and make sure you're on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter, write me messages and post me pictures and I will make you videos and the world shall be a better place because remember you are the whole point and connected we make 
a whole new world. I will see you tomorrow on Love TV.